When it comes to AI, the gate is open and the cows are out in the field. It's too late, folks. It's absolutely too late. The genie is out of the bottle. The cows are in the field. The, the, the gate is open. There is nothing you can do about it. AI is here. And no matter how much you stick your head in the sand, and say, I'm not interested, I don't want to know, I think it's the worst, po thing po the worst possible thing, that it's horrible, it's here and it's here to stay, and we need to learn how to work with it. Because it may not take our jobs, but like I said, even if it does, it's probably because your job is better suited for an AI anyway. But we need to think about it. We need to think about it in a non-adversarial context. And this is why I think we should think about a non-adversarial context. AI is not an, some alien beast we've created. It's not even a real machine that we've created. It's not a computer. There's not really a computer back there that's spewing all of this knowledge at you. So when you sit down in front of ChatGPT and you chat with ChatGPT, you may be thinking to yourself that you're talking to a computer. You may be thinking to yourself, there's some device back there that's talking to me. It's the device that's talking to me. It's not a device that's talking to you. What the device is doing is it's taking the sum total of the human knowledge that has been put into the device, and it's looking at the sum total of the human knowledge that's been put into the device and going, this human is now asking me a question. This human is now talking to me. Let me go back and look at the sum total of human knowledge or human conversation that has been put into my databanks. And let me see if I can take what's there, what humans have already said, and reconstruct it in such a way so that it would be useful for the human who is talking to me right now. So. You're not talking to a device. You're talking to a device that is taking all of this human knowledge and repurposing it, re-molding it into a new shape. But the actual substance that it's remolding into a new shape is us. It's the stuff that we've already created. So when you're talking to ChatGPT, you're not talking to a machine. You're not talking to a, a Terminator. You're talking to the human race or whatever knowledge that has been put into this machine from the human race. It is human knowledge that has been put into this machine. And all it's doing is replaying it for you in a way that makes it sound like you're actually talking to another human being. So. What's the threat? What are you worried about? Why are we concerned with this thing? It's not a machine. It is the rest of humanity talking back to us. Now, some people might say, well, the kind of stuff that it's outputting is really good. It's outputting really good written work. It's outputting really good visual work. It's outputting really good music. It's outputting really good videos. It's outputting all this great stuff. So why does it need me when it can output all of this great stuff? Well, think of it as a tool. It's just like any other tool. It can't do things by itself. It's tried. We've tried to have ChatGPT and other GPTs f feed into themselves, and all we get is gobbledygook. The key behind the use of ChatGPT and all these other tools is that is us. We have to provide the spark of imagination. And then it can take that and execute that imagination. We provide the spark, it executes. Now, it can add to what we've done, and that's why my favorite way of interacting with AI is actually having a conversation with it. I don't go in, in a, into it with a, this is exactly what I want you to do, ChatGPT. No, I go and say, this is kind of what I'm thinking about doing. What are your thoughts? And it can actually bring things in from other human beings that maybe I haven't even thought of. What we 
in the end provide the spark? It's something I came up with a long, long time ago. Computer-assisted creativity, right? I mean, think about YouTube for a second there. So one of the, th one of the powerful things about YouTube is that it's a distribution mechanism for everybody. Right? I mean, we used to have the distribution methods that were out there for, that weren't for everybody. They were just for specific individuals who could get on network TV and then we could watch what network TV deemed was good to us. With YouTube, you could have somebody in some remote place in the world with amazing talent become viral and be distributed on YouTube. That creativity has been given distribution. Now, think of this in the same way. Your creativity, let's say you're not a very good artist, you're not a very good writer, but you have great ideas. Let's say you have the most amazing idea ever for something, for a product, for a, for a book, for, a, for an image, for whatever. You have a fantastic idea, but you have no skills to turn that idea into reality. This is what AI can do. It can take that spark and turn it into a flame of reality. It can execute on an idea that you came up with without you having to have the interim creative skills to be able to create that idea. For example, let's say you're a startup founder and you're coming up with a great, you came up with a great idea for something, but you don't know how to code it and you don't, can't visualize it. You can't talk to a graphic designer and get the graphic designer to create it because there's no way to do it. So you go to ChatGPT or you go to Dolly or whatever and you say, this is what I'm thinking. And it can execute it for you. It's computer-assisted creativity. You have the creativity within yourself. You just don't have the skills to express your creativity. In the same way, the, the fantastic YouTubers, they didn't have the distribution method to be able to put get their stuff out there. ChatGPT and the other AIs do the exact same thing. They use your spark of creativity to create something. And you don't need that skill set, the creativity skill set, to be able to get to an output that's actually worthwhile to people. And that's where the beauty of it lies, is that it works with the spark of creativity in the human brain, and it can turn it into reality. So you don't necessarily need to have the skills to be able to create something. Now AI can create something from your spark, and you don't need the skills. So that means that so much more is going to be created. So much that could was never able to be created before is now going to be created. Sure, some of it's going to be crap, but a lot of it will be amazing. And that's one of the reasons I love the thought of AI so much. It takes what we envision, the spark, and can turn it into reality. And I think that's an amazing, amazing thing. And we need more of that. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.